on the irrigation front. Those of you who are from Telangana or those of you who are familiar with the, uh, with the geography of Telangana would know that Telangana had in fact, always the farmer of Telangana had in fact been heavily reliant on tube wells and bore wells. As a result, the depletion of groundwater levels in Telangana has been so rampant that even some studies uh, from, uh, of the international agencies have pointed out to a very, very acute uh, kind of a crisis. So what our Honorable CM has done? Because of the topography of Telangana, because of how Telangana is undulating and how water actually runs at a lower level and uh, while the contours and while the uh, you know, plain lands are at a higher level. I, I have no idea how many of you know this. If you don't believe me, you can pull up your phone, pull out your phone and type in Google. Please type in the world's largest lift irrigation project. You will realize that it is Kaleshwaram project in Telangana which has been completed in less than four years. It's the world's largest project completed by the youngest state in India in less than four years. You know, we often talk about Chinese execution, how well things move in China, how a building was completed in 100 days, how a project was conceived and conceptualized in less than a couple of years, etc., etc. But what Telangana has done is nothing short of a miracle, considering that we live in a democracy, and democracy, you know, there are a lot of things that, a lot of challenges that are inherent in getting done. So in spite of all the hurdles, in spite of all the obstacles, in spite of all the challenges and the vagaries of democracy, our Honorable CM has been able to deliver on the irrigation front. And therefore today, the situation is such that the produce from Telangana, the harvest from Telangana is so much that even Food Corporation of India is saying, I can't procure more. I give up. We actually are now ahead of Punjab in terms of our paddy production. We have been able to surpass many other states which were leaders. Earlier, the Uni United Andhra Pradesh used to be called uh, Annapurna. Now, I think Telangana has really become the Annapurna for entire India. It's the granary of India, which is able to produce enough for the rest of the country to be able to you know, consume. That has been the success you know, over the last seven years, which, is, which I think, in my uh, opinion, is one of, one of uh, a very, very interesting stories that has unfolded. It's besides the metrics, it's besides the numbers that I've mentioned, besides all these feats I've mentioned, there are three things I'd like to point out. While we, are, while we were focused on getting the basics right on the power front, on the drinking water front, on the irrigation front, we did not, we did not uh, you know, focus excessively on one area, one subject. In fact, Telangana's growth story, if you ask me, centers around the three I mantra, innovation, infrastructure, inclusive growth. That is the mantra that Telangana has followed. That is the mantra that Telangana has adopted. We innovated. You know, a lot of people assume when I say innovation, a lot of people think, you know, innovation is only confined to tech, uh, technology and techno, uh, tech parlance. Innovation has become a word, disruption has become a word which is, which is uh, synonymous with technology and startups. That's not the case. You can disrupt your processes, your, you can disrupt your policies, you can come out with newer ideas, you can come out with uh, uh, you know, uh, reforms in administration, disrupting the legacy processes that have been there forever. That's exactly what Telangana has done. How did we go about doing it? We took a crowdsourcing kind of model. We actually collaborated with the people. For instance, you know, when uh, Honorable Chief Minister wanted a new industrial policy in the state of Telangana, what did he do? He got into a room like this with various industry bodies, with the Confederation of Indian Industry, with FICI, with FAPSI, with DICI. There are several organizations in India which are all representatives of various uh, uh, industry associations. Now, all of them came into the room. He sat with them for seven hours. It was an interactive session. He asked them questions. He said, I want the best industrial policy you know, for my state. And this was right after the formation. And then he asked them, what are the problems? They obviously reeled out a number of them, power, lack of incentives, uh, lack of policy clarity, no single window system, time bound clearances, etc., etc. He asked our administration, he asked our IAS officers, he said, where can I find the best industrial policy? Where is the ease of doing business the lowest? Then they said, some, somebody said Singapore. Somebody else said Finland. Somebody else pointed out to another country. 
he made sure that all of those policies were brought into a room he sat with them personally and he eventually you know the first piece of legislation that has been passed by the state of telangana in november 2014 was a policy called as the tsi pass now what is tsi pass tsi pass stands for the telangana state for instance i take him as an example if he as an nri he owns a piece of land in his uh, native nizamabad and he wants to start a new factory which manufactures electronic goods let's imagine for a minute as per ts i pass as per the statute as per the legislation mahesh bigala does not need to take any permission from the government of telangana he does not need to meet the minister he does not need to meet the principal secretary he need not meet the municipality he need not meet the local gram panchayati he can start construction of his factory on day 1 he can hit the ground running no state in india will tell you this there is zero graft when it comes to industrial clearances what happens though in case you are wondering does this work that that sounds too good to be true is he just talking his way through he is a politician how do i believe him let me tell you when he actually starts the construction of his factory all we request any investor is that you submit an application online simultaneously because we need to know while there is a self certification process we need to know who's doing business who's doing what who is investing what what sector have they invested in and what are they likely to you know how much are they likely to contribute in terms of employment etc etc when you submit an application online through the ts i pass portal we promise again by legislation all clearances in 15 days what happens if i don't come back to you with a clearance in 15 days on the 16th day it's an automatic approval by legislation it's a deemed approval again no state in india will tell you this the third thing that also happens right after uh, you know you submit an application and the 15 day window lapses from the 16th day we can even penalize by legislation by statute the senior most of the bureaucrats also a sum of rupees 1000 per day should they actually be held responsible for holding up the file again no state in india will tell you this this is what has made this kind of disruption this kind of innovation has made telangana the place to do business in therefore in telangana today for an entrepreneur not only do you have ease of doing business you have peace of doing business your cost of doing business has come down your quality of doing business has gone up there is zero graft so therefore for those of you who are wondering does this really work in the last 7 years since we passed this legislation we have given out more than 19000 clearances through tsi pass we have been able to raise more than 2.3 lakh crore rupees as investment we have been able to create more than 1.6 million direct job potential in the state of telangana out of which 85% have already materialized we are not one of those vibrant states where things happen on paper but actually reality kuch aur hi hai we are one of those states which believes in delivering on the promise which believes in making sure whatever commitments we make are lived up to that's how this disruption has helped telangana not only on the industry front but on several fronts now what did i mean when i said um, infrastructure not only has telangana built the world's largest lift irrigation project in less than 4 years we have ramped up our power infrastructure with an investment of nearly 70 75000 crores of rupees from 7000 to 16000 megawatts i just mentioned to you on the drinking water front we nearly spent 7 billion dollars and we have ensured that each and every home receives a portable drinking water connection we also ensured that in the same trench that we laid for the water pipeline we also have decided to lay a fiber optic cable and that project also will be completed in the next few months so each and every home in telangana can be equipped with a 100 mbps broadband connection and people in bay area you know the power you know the power of uh, a fiber optic network running into your home in terms of health in terms of education in terms of commerce the kind of a game changer it can be when each and every home is kind of equipped with that so this has been the infrastructure uh, you know upgrade that has happened in telangana now on the inclusive growth part what what did i mean when i said infrastructure innovation inclusive growth telangana is a state that is focused on ensuring equitable growth holistic growth inclusive growth for instance 
When government of India recently released a report, or in fact a report card, on the top, top 10 villages, Sad Adarsh Gramin Yojana. Can you give me another mic? In Sansad Adarsh Gramin Yojana, top 10 villages were listed out. Among the top 10, 7 villages were from Telangana. Among the top 10, then this is a ranking given by Government of India. When Government of India gave out Swatch Sarvekshan rankings, which are given out for municipal local bodies, 12 awards were given to the Telangana municipalities. So the rural development and urban development in Telangana go hand in hand, have been progressing. Palle Pragati and Pattan Pragati have been going hand in hand. Likewise, our IT exports, which were at 57,000 crores when the new state of Telangana came into being, have today, seven years later, risen to 1,45,000 crores, a huge, humongous growth and a much higher growth rate than the national average. <laughs>